السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات والله بما تعملون خبير وقال تبارك وتعالى وقل رب زدني علما وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected علماء كرام elders, brothers, mothers and sisters and students Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to be in this auspicious gathering the topic seeking knowledge is a very important topic, a very vast topic Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's purpose of our creation was to worship him وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ that mankind and jinn they have been created for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala commentating on the word liya'budun he says liya'rifun so that people recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so how do we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to have knowledge so knowledge is of vital importance فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala under this he gets the chapter and he says that ilm is so important that even before la ilaha illallah even before we say the kalima shahada we need to have the knowledge regarding that matter so ilm is of very vital importance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam orders the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say wa qur rabbi zidni ilma so say rabbi o my lord zidni ilma increase me in knowledge so knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises the rank of the believers وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ and those people who have been bestowed with knowledge very big stages very big position very big ranks so it's not only daraja one singular but plural so many ranks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises for the person who actually has achieved and attained knowledge so this knowledge, subhanAllah, we need to achieve it whether we are student of deen or whether we are just a person who is doing his daily chores or his working. Whatever the situation, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu says, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking knowledge is far as compulsory upon every single Muslim. Whether male or female, this knowledge, to seek this knowledge is farz. Farz ain. So farz ain means that without seeking this knowledge, a person will be sinful. So if a person doesn't know the rulings regarding salah, he doesn't know the ruling regarding zakat, and zakat is compulsory on him, he doesn't know the rules and the injunctions regarding fasting, or he's about to embark on the journey of hajj, and he doesn't know the masail of hajj, he will be sinful. If he is intending to get married, he doesn't know the masail of marriage, he doesn't know the masail of talaq, then he will be sinful. So it is vital importance that a person seeks this knowledge and he learns the masail regarding these different topics. If we look at our elders, subhanAllah, the amount of effort they put in the seeking of this knowledge. Nowadays this knowledge that we have achieved or what we have in front of us is like a baked chapati in front of us, baked cooked rice in front of us because everything's there. In the olden days, subhanAllah, they had to go to seek this knowledge from one country to another country. <clears throat> it reminds me of the incident of a great scholar, and I want you to listen to this scholar's name is Baqi ibn Makhlad. Baqi ibn Makhlad, Undulusi rahimahullah ta'ala, how much effort he went through seeking this knowledge. So today we have got everything so easy. We come to the madrasa, we have the teachers in front of us, we have our books, and we just Everything is read out to us, even the Ibarat, the teacher many times reads, then the translation, then the commentary, 
and we are sitting down there sleeping away nodding away we are heedless we are lazy and we don't want to seek this knowledge it's all there you just have to take it in like that roti that food which is there in front of us we just have to put it into our mouth we don't even want to put it in the mouth we just want to and many times we put it in the mouth and we vomit it out we don't want this knowledge this is how our situation our condition is our reaction to this knowledge is but if we look at the lives of the pious predecessors i mentioned the name of baqi ibn makhlab baqi ibn makhlab al undulusi rahimahullah ta'ala he was born in 201 hijri he was born in 201 hijri and when he heard about the great imam imam ahmad ibn hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala in iraq he was in undulusia modern day spain how far spain from iraq subhanallah but he wanted to gain this knowledge from Imam Ahmad ibn Hamad rahimahullah ta'ala. He wanted to directly narrate a hadith from Imam Ahmad ibn Hamad rahimahullah ta'ala. So he embarked on the journey all the way from Spain to Iraq on foot. 2,000 miles. 2,000 miles on foot. From Spain to Iraq to gain knowledge from Imam Ahmad ibn Hamad rahimahullah ta'ala. Even though Imam Baqi ibn Makhlad rahimahullah ta'ala, he had 284 teachers. He wanted to seek this knowledge when he heard about the greatness and the profound knowledge of Imam Ahmad ibn Hamad rahimahullah. So he travels for months and then eventually he reaches Iraq. When he reaches Iraq, what happens is he realizes and he discovers that Imam Ahmad ibn Hamad rahimahullah ta'ala, he has, he is under house arrest. And he is banned from teaching Ahadith. Because at that time what happened was the Mu'tazilas, the Khalif at that time, there was this discussion, this contradiction between the scholars that is the Quran makhluk or ghair makhluk? Is it created or uncreated? And Imam Ahmad ibn Muhammad rahimahullah ta'ala, he was on the view that it is uncreated, is ghair makhluk. That's a topic on itself. But the point I was saying here is, that when he came, he discovered that Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala, he is banned from narrating ahadith, he's banned from teaching, and he's under house arrest. Under the government, under the Khalif's order, he could not narrate any hadith. So, <coughs> Baqi ibn Makhlad rahimahullah ta'ala, he comes to Iraq, and when he discovers this, he doesn't become disheartened. He goes to all the different scholars, and the, all the scholars say, no, no, it's better not to put yourself into trouble. So he goes and knocks on the door of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he opens the door and he asks him, who are you? He says, I'm Baqi ibn Makhlad. Where are you from? I am from Andalusia. Where is Andalusia? So he explains, he goes, is it North Africa? He goes, more further than North Africa. Subhanallah, you come all the way. But do you know that I am not uh, uh, given permission to narrate hadith to you I've been banned, I'm under house arrest so it's better for you to leave and go back to Spain just imagine he's travelled 2000 miles on foot so Imam Ahmad ibn Hamza rahmatullahi alayhi is saying to him that go back to Spain because I don't want to put you into trouble and I don't want to put myself into trouble be because if I start narrating hadith then I am going to be in trouble by the Khalif so Baqi ibn Makhla rahimullah ta'ala he says look I've come all the way I have to seek this knowledge. So he devises a plan. He sets a plan. And what's the plan? He goes, okay, what I will do is I will come from tomorrow as a beggar. I will dress in tatters clothes, in uh, any, uh, old clothes, and I will come and I will knock on the doors of the people. I will say anything for the sake of Allah. I'll be going on the streets, walking around with a bowl, utensil on my hand, and I will say anything for the sake of Allah. <coughs> and I will knock on your door, O Imam, and you open the door, and whilst I go inside, you can just narrate to me 5, 10, 15 hadiths, and then I will go away, and I will memorize them, and I will come the next day as well. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was amazed. He goes, okay, if you want to do that, that's no problem. So they put the plan for the next day, and this is the way he continued. He came, he knocked on the door, and he used to be saying on the streets, people used to think that this person is a beggar, he's coming to take food. So he's actually taking the spiritual food, not the physical food. Allahu Akbar. 
So he goes in and every day Imam Ahmad ibn Ahmad rahmatullah alayhi narrates to him 5, 10, 15 hadiths. He memorizes them at that night and then the following day he goes back again. So in that way he continued to narrate hadiths. He continued to achieve knowledge from Imam Ahmad ibn Ahmad rahmatullah alayhi until the time came that the ban was uplifted. The next caliph came and he was a person who had aqidat of Imam Ahmad ibn Ahmad rahmatullah alayhi and he continued to narrate hadiths from him. So the point